PWM32 football podcast. Um, today, I have been joined by Kieran McAndrew, who is a massive, massive Oldham athletic fan. Um, and it's fair to say that he has been through pretty much everything um, in his time as an Oldham fan. Is that fair to say, Kieran? Well, a- apart from the success. <laughs> <laughs> um so, obviously, with you being an Oldham fan, how long has your love affinity with the with the club, how long has it been? Uh, well, I'm 23, I guess it's been since since I can remember, about four-year-old, probably my first season ticket. Um, can't actually remember my first game, but I just know that I had a season ticket at four-year-old. And, and the first kind of memory that I have is when we beat Man City in the Cup in 2005, which is, what, 15 years ago now, so... My first real memory of, of watching Oldham is actually when I was about eight year old, because the first the first few years I must have just been getting dragged along with by, by my dad. I, I watch it with my dad, my two brothers, um, Michael and Connor. So yeah, um, first first real memory is about eight year old. Nice, nice, and um, obviously with with City um, getting banned from Europe and all those sort of different connotations that might and those implications that might occur from the FA, you might end up playing City again um, in the very near future um, so you mentioned obviously then you didn't particularly and you're not particularly too aware of that of that first game but talk me through that that first game against City in the cup you know what do you remember from the day what was it like oh, I just remember the stands being full for the first time I, we used to sit in the the lookers stand um, which was the stand that eventually got knocked down um, and is now the new stand um, so we used to sit in the upper and it was quite pretty rowdy up there to be fair there was a there was a load of like one of the, some of the old boys um and then yeah so from from that game I just remember it being absolutely packed couldn't couldn't see an empty seat City had sold out their away end um all the big boys were there I think talking about Anelka, Fowler, um Richard Dunn <laughs> that'll throw <laughs> that'll throw you back um Vassell I think um Darius Vassell was there as well um, and yeah, I just remember, like you say, it being packed, and then we we snuck the winner in. Um, I think it was Chris Vernon, uh, Scott Vernon, sorry, Scott Vernon scored from a David Ayres cross, um, and the place just erupted, and and that no doubt that's why it's my favourite. Well, not my favourite memory of of a home game, but certainly my first memory. That, that sounds absolutely. Amazing. Is it a cup game under the lights by any chance? Because you know every fan has that special feeling of a cup game under the lights so was well, like I say was it was it a cup game under the lights or was it like a normal Saturday game like I say I, I was eight year old so I, I think it was the it must have been the third round um potentially the fourth and sometimes they're played on played on the evening but I do remember it being a Saturday I think I do remember it being a Saturday could be wrong we'll have to fact check <laughs> <laughs> um and obviously you mentioned as well that you go to games with your dad and, and your brother is it when if and when you do go now is it still a family affair or do you just sort of go on your on your own with your mates well it depends really i mean through my dad's always been since he was probably about 13 when he moved from from down south up to oldham so he he's always been a big Oldham fan since 13 then he brought me and my my brothers along but his his group of mates have their kids as well so naturally we've just one of my best mates is um is my dad's best mate's son so we've been going since again four or five year old together so now home games there's a there's probably about a group of 12 of us that that still go um and then away a selection of, of those 12 will go to the away games so yeah it's it's a group it's a mixture of mates family um and and family's mates. Good little brilliant, mix we've brilliant. got. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it. it. sounds it, to be fair. And um, with that group, then, is there any kind of rituals or superstitions that you guys do? Or is it, you know, a pub fight maybe before a game? Or, you know, lucky pants, lucky shirt? You know, talk, to <laughs> about those. talk to me about those. Well, I don't have any lucky pants or shirt because, let's be honest, they did not work very well if I did have them. <laughs> um, I can't remember the last game Oldham won, to be fair. Um, so no, we we go Saturday um, from like 
any time after 12. So I coach in the morning, I've got my own team. Um, and as soon as that's out of the way, I meet my, meet a few mates in the pub. We have a bit of, we have a bite to eat now, actually. We didn't used to, but the last three or four seasons, we've been having something to eat, a few pints, and then we'd walk to walk to the ground. So yeah, that's that's our go-to on a, on a home game. And then obviously away game, we'd pretty much always meet in Manchester, um, get the train anywhere from Manchester, really. Have a, have a spoon's breakfast and a, and a few pints. <laughs> I tell you what, you can't beat a spoon's breakfast on an away day. That's that's for sure. That is for sure. <laughs> it's um, just a ritual, isn't it? Yeah, I think it has to be. It's got to be up there for sure. Um, in your time at being an Oldham fan, I know, you, like as we've mentioned, you've suffered quite a bit um, as as an Oldham fan. Um, what <laughs> Un- would you... Understatement of the century. That <laughs> suffered quite a bit. <laughs> well, for those that don't know, obviously Oldham once upon a time were were a Premier League side. So, and I don't think you've been. I don't really want to try and rub it in, but you've not been anywhere kind of near it or or anywhere close to sort of getting back. Since. No, so um, to to paint the picture, let's let's have it right. So we was a Premier League team in the glory years. Uh, I think we got relegated in. 94 um again I, I could be wrong I wasn't even born then um so say we got relegated in 94 we had one season in the in the second division which is now the championship um got relegated straight away I think similar to kind of Sunderland story um we might have potentially had two seasons there again I, I wasn't around so um I have to check the history books but then from there we've had tw- we had 20 20 seasons in league one the third division which is my whole childhood in the same division. We had two playoff campaigns. So in 20 years, the only bits of success I've seen is two playoff campaigns. And then in our 20th season in League One, we got relegated. Oh, <laughs> so, so now we're in the basement division. So that sums up my, my 20 years, I guess, watching, watching Oldham Athletic is, is one relegation, two playoff campaigns and a couple of FA Cup wins. <laughs> Oh no! Well, you you mentioned the FA Cup, um, and I do recall seeing a glimpse of you on Match of the Day. I believe it was last season, Fulham away at the yeah. Cottage. What that a day! Must have been it. Is that up there then? Would you say with probably one of the best games as an Oldham fan that you've you've experienced and that you've been to? Oh, by far, mate, by far. Um, quite quite comfortably the, the best day being an Oldham fan and, and you know what all of the FA Cup days um, seem to be kind of the, the days I look for because every single memory I've got of Oldham and, and having a, a brilliant day out don't get me wrong that the usual away days I mean but the, the away days where you, you go into Knott's Forest and you're 2-0 down at half time you've got 3,500 Oldham fans in the away end and you score three goals in seven minutes so we, we beat Forest 3-2 what that was my favourite away game ever until Fulham. Um, but yeah, after, after beating Forest, just to go back to that point, we then got Liverpool in, in the next round, in the fourth round. Um, beat Liverpool at home, which was, they had Gerrard, Sterling, Carrig. I don't know if Carrigan was there, actually. Um, Daniel Agger, um, Suarez, Suarez scored against us. Um, and we won, and we, we beat them, and that's... That's, again, uh, my first memory was City at home in the FA Cup. My best memory at home is Liverpool in the FA Cup. Um, and then we beat Liverpool and got Everton. Um, Everton at home in the fifth round. Drew two all, scored a last-minute equaliser. Um, took them to their place, which we've been to Goodison twice now. 2008, where we beat Everton away in the FA Cup. And then 2014, I think it was, or 15, um, we we drew we lost against them at their place but drew at our place so as you can tell pretty much all of my best memories are, are the FA Cup days yeah yeah it seems that I think I remember watching that Liverpool game because if memory serves me right it was it was a live game I think it was on BBC or or whatnot and I think I remember the commentator at one point mentioning that one of the stands had a bit of a leak in the in the roof so you just <laughs> see in the corner just a massive massive drip pretty much a constant drip of just rain just peltering down onto some some poor person in, <laughs> in and around the director's box but that, I think that it was at that like, time you know that you might have got on. the wrong game I don't think that's Olden Olden stand <laughs> no no that, uh, that sounds, I think I think the uh, I think the cup yeah I think but I think that revenue would have helped to probably fix the leak <laughs> from that from that particular stand but yeah no I think I remember 
And was it Matt Smith, I believe, that scored yeah, in the... Uh, Matt Smith, what a, what yeah. a boy. <laughs> yeah, I think he was, it was a bullet header, if memory serves me right. From, yeah. uh, young from young squad right. headers, I think. <laughs> Six yeah, foot he's... six foot six, I think he is. Um, he 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 bagged he bagged quite a few important goals for us in that cup run, um, and then he also scored a tap in from a, a Lee Croft. I don't know if you know Lee Croft, but we got him from City yeah, on yeah. loan years back, um, and then he came to join us again eight years later when he was a bit fatter, uh, slowed down a little bit, and he had a cross come shot, um, and Matt Smith just tapped it in at the back post against Liverpool. So yeah. Got a lot to thank Matt Smith for. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you, th- there might be a few contenders here in terms of the the worst game that you that you've seen being being an Oldham fan. It, it you know it could be it could be that whole relegation season, um, or it could just be one one at in particular. Do you know what? Um, I was struggling to think of one just as you were asking that question and. And then you reminded me of the relegation season. I think I think I tried to scrap that from the memory book. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a particular game in that season. We we went down to Northampton on the last day, um, and yeah, we we knew that that we had to kind of get a draw or a win to stay up, um, dependent on other results. Um, Northampton could have gone down on that day. We could have gone down. Our next door neighbours, Rochdale, could have gone down. Um, our other neighbours, Bury, were already down that season, so it 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 did have like the feeling of a big game. So we we sold out the away end, and then we got an additional side stand that we that we also sold out that allocation for. Um, and bearing in mind, Northampton's like a a good trek from from Holden. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so we all went down. We had a belting day, to be fair, in the sun, plenty of beers. Um, got into the ground for. They even think they even consider relegation um, because if we'd have got a draw against them, and then we we was reliant on other results. But if we'd have got a draw, we were fair, we felt like we were fairly safe. Um, anyway, as it happened, Rochdale beat Charlton, who were going for the playoffs that day. They scored in the last minute. Joe Thompson, the the cancer survivor, scored, um, which meant we then needed a win because they beat playoff hopefuls Charlton. Um, so we we drew against Northampton that day, and it was it was a terrible journey home. But up until and the, and the reason probably it's my worst ever game is there was just no fight, there was no passion, there was no the, the eleven players on the pitch didn't look like they they wanted to be there. Um, and we went, I think we went one up, if if memory serves me right. God, I, I tried to erase it to be fair. Um, but yeah, we. We might have gone one nil down and then one all, um, but yeah, there was just no fight, no fight at all, and it weren't the Oldham Athletic that I, I fell in love with, to be fair. Um, and then we dropped down to the the basement division, which I'd never seen us playing, so it's it, it was a kick in the teeth, yeah, because I've been used to kind of being in League One, where occasionally you have big teams like your Leeds, you've your Southamptons, your mid. <sighs> I'm trying to think. You even QPR have been down there. Leicester have been down there. Um, but yeah, Le- I remember playing Leicester in 2011 in League One. Beats. I think. I think we beat them. Um, and then they went up that season, and bloody never looked back. <laughs> so in League One, you get a bit of exposure to, to some of the the bigger teams. Um, whereas in League Two, you're playing Forest Green Rovers, bloody hell, Exeter. Um, there's some, been some horrible teams, Morecambe, Fleetwood. Sorry if, if anybody supports those teams, but <laughs> they're bringing they're bringing 30, 40 fans to, to an away to Boundary Park, and it's like it's awful. <laughs> it's really really <laughs> poor down in this this division. Oh, I don't envy you. I don't envy you at all. Um, but now you mentioned obviously Leicester. Then I think I remember that particular season that you were talking about because I think at that time. I had a season ticket at MK Dons and um, yeah, I think I remember, um, yeah, I think they bagged a late, late winner. I can't, I think it might have been Max Gradle that, that scored in like the last, in the last he minute was, or so. He was a brilliant kick. player to be fair. Yeah. And um, I think I remember him coming on and I said to my dad when he, uh, when he come on, I said, he's a good player him and he's bagged, he's literally done like a bit of a knuckleball technique and put it right in the top corner. And I think Leicester brought quite a big, big following that day. Um, to to Stadium MK, so I remember that one uh, fondly. I think a few even snuck in the home end and 
and whatnot as well that get and then obviously when Gradle scored it was it just went off. Um, you know, there was pure pure limbs in that in that away end <laughs> and then obviously obviously well, the uh the ones that were in the home end got, got booted out. But no, I remember that remember that season, yeah, for sure. Well they for sure they must have they must have had an absolute army. Don't get me wrong, they were they were probably they they were in they would have been top at the time. Um and don't and, and the MK Dons away end is absolutely huge, isn't it? So for them yeah, to yeah. For them to still have fans in the home end as well, must they must have brought an absolute army down to to Milton, Milton Keynes. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a, they'd sold it out because Leicester's not that far anyway from from Milton Keynes. It's probably just over an hour, um, hour and a bit. So, yeah, I think for those for those especially at that time, it could have been probably one of their closer away days. Um, but no, I definitely remember that side, and obviously remember the uh, the Leeds um, sides that were in League One as well, and obviously them bringing a, a massive following. Um, to Stadium MK as well, and they have done, and I think they did a few years ago when MK Dons in the Championship. They literally had, they got given both both tiers, and I think it was like eight, eight or nine thousand. Um, yeah, that day. Um, well, just just to kind of pull pull you up on that, when I when I told when I was speaking about Morecambe and Fleetwood and and whatever else, uh, the, these teams that that bring twenty or thirty fans to to to, to Boundary Park and. Ah, I couldn't forgive myself if I didn't mention this, but Milton Keynes Dons are, are up there with with those teams as well. <laughs> they and, and that was kind of the sinking feeling when when MK Dons are now what a division above us, but at times they've been two divisions above us, and it's like they're a team that were created about 10, 10 15 years ago, and it just kind of sinks. It's that sinking feeling of wow, how far have we how far have we fallen? We used to be a Premier League team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, anyway, back to talking Oldham um, and everything Oldham with yourself. Um, if there was one particular player all time that would be your favourite, who would it be and, and give us a reason why? Easy. Really easy. David Ayres. What a player, what a boy. Um, he just could cross a ball wherever on the pitch and, and find somebody in the box, whether it was from, from 60 yards deep in his own half. Um, whether it be a corner that he scored, he scored a couple of corners. I think he scored six or seven free kicks a season. Like I could be, ex- I could be kind of inflating these figures, but he's just somebody that I, rem- I remember. Just the natural ability um, could just ping across from anywhere and take it past the player with ease. And, and don't get me wrong, he was old when he came. He came to our club. He was probably late twenties. Um, and again. I was young at the time, but he's yeah, he's by far and away my favourite player. Um, but bringing it more recently, um, I think quite a lot of kind of Oldham fans my age have, have got an affinity with Jose Baxter as well, um, which a lot more people will kind of be familiar with. Um, so his his story kind of dropping dropping back from Everton to Oldham, um, had a couple of really good seasons got picked up by Sheffield United and then obviously he had, he had the drug issues but natural ability wise I've not seen a a more, a more gifted player um, so yeah Erzy, David Erz, um for like my first first memories at Oldham but more, most recently probably Jose Baxter yeah so it sounds like they're two kind of obviously both talented footballers but they seem to be two sort of different ends I think you know for people that know sort of Jose Baxter he was more of like a technical player whereas Hersey that you've described there was more of a get it and whip it kind of kind of player yeah um, yeah I, that probably it's probably not paying Hersey enough respect there in, in terms of that he, he was more than just a whip it player but that's just what I remember him being special for it is his ability to cross the ball and score free kicks from from anywhere. So yeah, that that was his his probably main talent. Um, nice one. Moving it to the current squad, um, which <laughs> which is going to be interesting. Um, your current favourite player in the Oldham squad, who would it be and why? I, I genuinely, um, I, I don't think I have one. Um, I don't have any affinity or connection with any of the players on that pitch. Um, we, we, we'll probably come on to it later on in more detail, potentially, but the, the owner that we have at the minute, he, he, he's probably signed 30 or 40 players for this season. Um, half of them from the French 7th division, the rest of them from God knows where. I genuinely don't know where he, he brings these players in from, um, but if I, if, 
if I had to be forced to an answer, it'd probably be Tom Hamer, simply because he, he came through the, the youth ranks and he's our centre half slash fullback. Um, so yeah, <laughs> if if you had to push me, it'd be Tommy Hamer. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was a that was a difficult difficult question for you, but no, cheers for the answer. Cheers for the answer on that one. If, you, um, if you'd have asked me last season, it would have been Peter Clark. Now he is he, he's class. He, he was with us for for I think it was three seasons. Um, he was 30, 36 when he when he left us. Um, our owner said that he's he's not good enough. He's he's passed it, and then he went and signed for a club one division higher than us. <laughs> so. Peter Clark, I don't know if you do know him, but he started off at Everton um, himself, uh, played a couple of prem- Premier League games and then just dropped down the leagues. But I think every single club he's been at is one player of the season by Everton. So he's some player, a centre half, just colossal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is it, did he have a spell at Preston? Is that the is that the Clark? No, that the that's one? His, I think. There's there's quite a few different Clarks. Um, I don't think Peter Clark's got a brother, but there's Tom Clark, who who was at Preston centre half, um, and another Clark, Nathan Clark, who I think was also at Preston, but then played for Oldham and Leighton Orient. But no, this is this is a separate one. He's um, from from different areas, I think. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you for thank you for pulling me up on, <laughs> on that one for sure. Well, my um, lower my lower league knowledge is is obviously going to be a little bit better than a, a Tottenham a Tottenham fans, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. No, you can call me out as well. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, in an Oldham fan, I know you've mentioned there it's been very very tough tough times for you, and obviously mentioned about the owner, and you may not go as much now because of it, but. And obviously, you mentioned your FA Cup um, affinity, but is there that? What is that one most kind of memorable moment for you? It might just be that you went, you know, for the first time, or or whatnot, or you know, is it is it something that we've already mentioned, or is there is there another memorable moment for you? Um, it's probably it's probably something we've already mentioned in the fact that it it, it was Fulham away. Um, but I tell you an interesting story about Fulham, so. We, with it being so far away and, and down in London, um, we thought we'd make the most of it and obviously stay in a hotel the night before. So we went down, me, my dad, my two brothers. Um, in fact, we, we met my other, my older brother um, in Fulham on the day. But anyway, long story short, we went down with the whole family, stayed over the night before. And my mum's got no interest in the football whatsoever. Um, she watched it on the TV because she, she has to because we all watch it. But... Um, She's got no interest in it, really. Um, and on the day, she was going to go shopping in, in the city centre in London. Um, and for some reason, I think we had a spare ticket. And we were like, come on, just just come along with us. Like, why, why go and spend loads of money in, in the city centre? Just just come with, come with the boys. <laughs> so she came with us. Um, and I think I would, I would have never have thought of my favourite away game being with my mum back there. But I think her seeing the amount of passion that me, my dad and my two brothers have for, for the club and seeing us so happy. At that picture of us on Match of the Day bouncing around the stands, I just don't think I'll ever forget that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one, my favourite memory. But, yeah, it's probably because my mum was there and she saw how much the club means to, to me, and my, me and my brothers and dad. That sounds that actually sounds like quite a nice, um, a nice story and quite a nice moment as well. And I think I've, sometimes... It's, your mum is either w- fully with you or they just kind of tend to go, no, that's their time and let them go. So I think sometimes exposing your mum to that, if they're not exposed to it already, I think is quite a, quite a nice thing personally. Yeah, because I, I, I can't remember another game that she's ever been to um, that I can remember in a way. She, she probably has done. I think she went to the, um, the FA Cup semi-finals with my dad years ago. Um, obviously, I've never been to an FA Cup semi final with Oldham, but my dad went to to that one, and then the League Cup final as well when we played Nottingham Forest. So I'd never been to a game with her that I can remember. So her seeing that, and then the atmosphere that the Oldham fans created. I mean, Fulham fans were talking about it for months, um, saying that we're the best best away fans that ever have ever visited their their ground. So for for her to see those olden fans like that she gets it now she gets why we go up and down the country she gets why we spend so much money on the club do you know what I mean um 
so yeah, <laughs> it was it was good then. Um, nice. Um, moving on from that and completely going the opposite way, what would you say is the lowest point that you've had supporting Oldham this season? Um, the, the relegation obviously was was tough, but this season the disconnect between the fans, the owner, the players, everything. Like I, I mean. I've been to two home games this year. I probably average twenty home games a season for the past twenty for the past fifteen twenty years, and this season I've been to two. And do you know what? I've not missed it one bit. And the reason for that is is because the owners just pulled pulled the club apart. He's he's put players in there that nobody recognises. Players that I mean, there's there's one player. I think he's called Coco Gonzalez, and I mean. I don't think I've ever seen him kick a ball. We've signed him, but I don't know where he is or what he's doing. I don't think he's part of the training setup. That's just one example of, of maybe fifteen or sixteen that I could I could say. And the only reason I've said him is because I can remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the lowest point's got to be this this season by far in a way. Um, I've missed. The only thing I have missed is, is going to the to the pub, having a, having a bit of bite to eat and a few beers with, with the lads that I go go to the game with but I've not missed the football one bit Is that because the football's not been great for a while or is it just purely the owner? The owner I can't I can't bring myself to, to support the club at home and put money into the club when he's squandering it and you know what I don't even know what he's doing with the money um, there's, there's loads of rumours about money laundering there's money up, there's rumours God I genuinely don't know what he's doing with the money but I can't bring myself to to put money into his pockets to to squander. So I've just been going to the away games that um, that you can kind of still put money into other clubs and enjoy watching your team. And and even those have been difficult because I've been going to away games that I still don't have that connection or that affinity with the players. There's there's not one player on the pitch really that that I can that I feel is wearing that that Oldham shirt and, and will be wearing it for a few seasons to come and, and will wear it with pride. So, yeah, this this season's been by far and away my lowest point. But yeah, it sounds like it's been a it's been a tough season for for yourself. Um, what who would you go and put on and maybe even put your neck on the line and say has been the best manager that Oldham has had in your in your lifetime supporting them? Oh, John Sheridan. <laughs> I, I I couldn't. I couldn't explain how much love I have for that man. <laughs> Even though he's probably snaked us a couple of times um, and left us maybe. So he's managed us on four separate occasions, maybe even five. The first one as a caretaker, second one as permanent, third and fourth as permanent. And then I think it was the fifth time he came back, kept us up. And then we thought, you know, he kept us up and we had no... We had no right really to stay up. We'd, we'd done that badly that season, um, and out of nowhere, he, he 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 just made the eleven just run through brick walls for the shirt. Um, and out of nowhere, we we beat Bolton at home, we beat Blackburn at home, we beat Sh- Bradford at home. I think um, we were beating all the big boys, and they had they were selling out the away end, and they had hopes of going up, which to be fair, they probably still did when go up. But we beat them at home to stay up and, and John Sheridan was, was massive in that. He was also massive in, in the playoff campaign that we had. So yeah, by far and away, John Sheridan. He also played for us. Um, him and his brother were two centre mids, John Sheridan and Darren Sheridan, both Salford lads, um, which is just down the road from us. And yeah, they, they were cla- he was class as a player, but even better as a manager for me. Would, it, would you say that John Sheridan is kind of Mr Oldham in that respect? Yeah, ask any Oldham fan, especially my my age, and even some of the older older boys who watched him play. Um, I, f- I think he played in I think he played in Europe for Leeds. Um, he, he played in the first division with Chef Wednesday. He's like a Chef Wednesday legend. Leeds love him, um, and obviously Oldham love him. But yeah, ask any kind of Oldham fan, and they'd have a positive positive story to tell you about John Sheridan. Yeah, it sounds like I mean. It sounds sort of like from the outside, you know, he keeps getting the 
the call to go back and you kind of do think that he is Mr. Oldham in, in that respect. Um, going from best manager being Mr. Oldham himself, John Sheridan, who is the, probably the worst that you've seen. <laughs> oh, well, where do I start with this? Uh, there's, there's been that many. There's been that many, Wes. Um, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. Do you know what? Um, David Dunn came in and he had an arrogance about him. He replaced um, a fella called, I think I'm right in saying, Darren Kelly came in, who at the time, there was a story about him being Sunderland under-12s manager. Um, and then from Sunderland under-12s or 15s, whatever age group he was he was managing, he then became Oldham's first team coach and manager. Now, he, he got off to an awful start, but he never stood a chance because the fans were against him from day one, which is a shame really, but... He didn't help himself with his negative tactics, playing for a draw. He, he had all these like funny sound bites in training up on the up on the side of the walls and stuff. Um, I couldn't even remember what the sound bites were, but he was trying to make himself sound like he was he was better than he was, um, and it it was awful. I think it's the worst football we've ever seen. But then David Dunn came in and replaced him, um, and was even worse. He just tried to play for draws or or nick a goal and it was absolutely dire to watch and obviously David Dunn was a, a brilliant footballer um, an exciting player to watch but his team were awful but he had this arrogance about him that he never made any mistakes it was always the owner's fault it was the fans fault for being on his back but he was awful so just purely down to arrogance I'd probably say David Dunn but Darren Kelly we plucked him from Sunderland under 12s and <laughs> I don't. He might have scored four goals in in fifteen or sixteen games. Um, I say he scored, we scored as a team, um, and probably picked up about seven points. Uh, and I might be exaggerating ever so slightly there, but it was awful. Yeah, I was gonna. I, I, when I was thinking about that question, I thought, oh, I could be a few contenders, <laughs> a few contenders for, and, for and this that's, just, that's not even scraping the surface. That's just the two that, are in my my most recent memory, there was. Some of the older fans would probably say David Penny. Um, they are oh, Dave Penny. Sorry, um, I remember a song that that we used to sing, and it was so it was so vitriolic, like against him and getting him up, getting him out of our club. And I reckon he stayed probably for about seven or eight games during the process, where fans had totally gone against him, um, and they were singing some awful songs in the stands. But he still kind of kept his job, so. Some other fans might have Dave Penny as the worst ever manager, but for me, because of his arrogance, I'm going to say David Dunn. <laughs> How many times did you lot try and remind him about that Rabona that went wrong in his Birmingham days? To be honest. I don't, I don't <laughs> think we ever did. I, I wish I did, though. If I, if I ever got into a room with him again, I, the first thing I'd tell him was that he was a terrible manager, and the second thing I'd tell him was never try that Rabona ever again in his life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now, Kieran, you've probably been and seen majority of football grounds in your time following Oldham up and down the country. Um, if you could give me one favourite ground, in, excluding Boundary Park, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, what, that, that what would it, it be? What would it be uh, if it was could be one? In terms of purely purely off looks or off atmosphere or. What 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 we're saying is it kind of just the... just your favourite ground excluding excluding Boundary Park it could be the way it looks it could be do you know what we've gone there and got a, a you know a massive result or you know just that that ground that that always yeah. has, that might have something something a little bit for you it, it's a good question if I had to pin it down I'd probably say I'd probably say Goodison Park it, it's a proper old school stadium. It reminds me, <laughs> this sounds silly, but it reminds me of Boundary Park. It's got wooden stands at times. It's got wooden seats. It's just proper, proper old school. Um, it's got, we, the away end obviously has three tiers, um, which when, when it's sold out, which we sold it out, it, it just looks amazing. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say Goodison Park, but I've been to Anfield with Oldham. I've been to Craven Cottage, which is a beautiful stadium with Oldham. Um, and I've been to Rochdale with Oldham. <laughs> <laughs> so 
and everything in between. But no, I totally, totally agree with you about Goodison. I mean, I went there um, last season with Spurs when we when we beat them six two around Christmas time, and there was just something about it. Um, you know, you even you know they do say that Everton is the people's club, and you sort of see where the ground is in and around the area, and you almost believe it, that like, kind of thing. You know, it is sort of a club for for the people of the of the area. But yeah, no, I, I to, it, and you know, even walking towards the away, and then it's like you're walking down, and all of a sudden it just comes out of nowhere. On your, I think it might have been, well, depending on what way you walk, but for me and my dad, it was on the left hand side, and you just go, oh, here's the ground, and then <laughs> yeah, you know, you yeah. get you get shepherded into into the away end. But no, it's and I, I totally agree with what you mean. You know, the wooden seats in certain parts of the parts of the ground and and all of that. So yeah, no, to, I 100% kind of resonate with what you mean about um about Goodison. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it'd be every say say you're a typical kind of Premier League fan. You've probably been to quite a few Premier League away grounds now. I don't know if it'd be up there for for you guys, but obviously for for us, uh, we've not been to to a whole host of Premier League grounds, especially a, a fan my age, because we've been in the lower league. So yeah, it's, like you say, um, there's there's terraced houses right outside the ground, which just reminds me of again of Boundary Park. There's <laughs> it's a shame ours just isn't as big as that. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, so obviously you mentioned that Goodison being one of your one of your favourite grounds. What would be one ground that you go, oh, this is an absolute dive of a place. I can't wait to get out. <laughs> excluding again, excluding excluding Boundary Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Boundary Park would be up there for my, my favourite and my worst. <laughs> but um, no, it's just coming back to Boundary Park, like it's got so much character. Each each stand is different. Um, and, and a lot of fans do come and say, yeah, do you know what? There's a leaky leaky corner, there's stuff falling off it, but it, it's got so much character. And I think a lot of fans appreciate that. But um, my, my worst ground, the, in terms of shabbiness, um, there's so many, there's so many when you go, when you fall down the leagues. Um Macclesfield away, that was awful because it's an open terrace. So I, I love terraced away, away ends. Um, you, you can create so much noise when it's got a roof. But Macclesfield away, we took, we sold it out again. Um, we, we sell out quite a few away away ends down in down in our leagues just because they don't they don't hold many. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we probably took about one thousand two hundred sold out capacity, and we just couldn't create an atmosphere and. That's what I love about Oldham games, away games, is we do create an atmosphere. Everybody goes, they've had plenty of beers and we get behind the boys and there's always a positive atmosphere. Um, and even the negative atmospheres that they're good to be involved in because it's so loud. Um, and at Macclesfield, you couldn't create you couldn't create anything. So that's probably the worst. And then, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to say Milton Keynes because <laughs> it, it's just empty. And, and and don't get me wrong, I understand why it's empty, but you, you can't enjoy the game because even like we say we took 600 all the way down to, to Milton Keynes, that's quite a good following for a lower league club. But because the away end holds six or seven thousand, it's just awful. Like I've never been back since since the first time I went because it, it's a beautiful stadium. It it's got loads and loads of stuff around it that that's fantastic for that that level, but. Yeah, there's, there's no atmosphere, and you'll probably agree with that. To be fair, yourself, won't you? Yeah, I think it can be quite difficult, especially where, like you say, the level that the MK Dons have by and large played at um, for away fans to really kind of generate an atmosphere. And I think unless you travel in in big numbers, you know, we've mentioned before about Leicester and Leeds bringing, you know, six thousand plus. I remember Wolves one year brought about ten. Um, so I think unless you travel in those big numbers to to stadium MK, like I, I do agree, it can be quite difficult. And even yeah. you know when I was when I was a season ticket holder there, sometimes you know Don MK Dons would play Oldham say on a Tuesday night and you know be camping in for for a draw or whatnot. But the thing is, me and my dad have gone to say Spurs on the Saturday, so we're watching top well, <laughs> well, top Premier League players yeah. and some of the best in the world to watching. You know, Oldham come to you know a big a big stadium like you say brought say six hundred or whatnot, and then you know you're camping for a draw, and that kind of thing was a little, was a little bit tough to to get a head round it. 
at yeah, times. Ex- but exactly. I thought and you'd think... enjoyed Stadium MK with your padded seat, you know, and, and Do you know, the padded seat I, and everything like that. <laughs> I didn't get round to saying that earlier, but Stadium MK has definitely got the best seats in the game. They're so comfortable. Um, so I've got a lot of negatives to say about MK, but there's the, the positive is the fact that it is a beautiful stadium. And they do have lovely padded seats. <laughs> but the problem is, we, we've never been high flying when we played MK. So, like your leads and stuff that have taken six or seven thousand, I get that. It, it probably would have been a, a belting day for them. But we've never been up near the top. Otherwise, we'd probably take a few a few thousand and, and it would have been a, a different experience for me. But yeah, it's unfortunately, um, we, we'd never been high flying when we played MK. So. <laughs> No, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I get that. I get that. Um, maybe next time, if you are down in MK Dons, do play Oldham at Stadium MK. Give us a shout, and we might have to catch <laughs> yeah. up and, and meet up or, or whatnot. Obviously, it depends on the uh, the Tottenham schedule as well. But you know, we'll see. We will see on these things. Um, just a final one for me, then, Kieran. What would you say your hopes are for next season? I'm going to go on the pitch because I know I have a feeling what your answer might be in terms of off. <laughs> So hopes for next season. Because... It's a hard question to answer. That to be fair, mate. Um, on this, on the pitch, unless something drastically changes, um, we're certainly not going to get any investment from from this owner. Um, the only kind of investment that he's put in is is. I suppose he spent the budget signing 35, 40 players instead of signing twenty two. Qu- good quality players um so hopes for next season is at the minute as drastic as this sounds um it's just to stay in the, the football league um hopefully we don't get we got we don't go into administration but some fans have, have spoken about that as being a, a positive and, and i can see where they're coming from because that could then mean a change of ownership um so but if we start the season on minus 10 next year, which is looking unlikely now that all this COVID, COVID situation has come about, um, if we start the season on minus 10, we'll probably go down because we're, we're not going to be good enough on the pitch. But all being well, if this season doesn't get scrapped and say we went into admin this season, then we're, we're looking strong enough to stay up because we've, we've got quite a lot of points advantage on, on the, lo- the lower down teams so I'd rather if we look there's make no bones about it like a lot of Oldham fans do genuinely think we're going to go into administration whether it be this season or next so if that is the case and that does happen I'd rather it be this season because we've we've got the advantage of, of extra points <laughs> sorry it's not a positive answer <laughs> No, no, no. Obviously, it's uh, it's an open, it's a very sort of open question um, for yourself. So, do you think if you're hoping that it is this season, and then you know if there is any carry on from this from this season, you go into administration, and then sort of you get to next season almost with a fresh start, and then hopefully try and and kick on. Is that yeah. is that is that, that, that fair? That, I think that'd be the best best situation. Is is if we go into admin now, hopefully a change of ownership. Um, we get the we get the stadium back owned by the fans. That would we'd be going into next season with all the fans would probably be coming back positive. That I would personally be back because of the change of ownership, um, and and we're quite a we're quite a well backed team. Um, our home attendances have dwindled massively over the last ten years because of because of corrupt ownership and and just that lack of lack of ambition. Like we've not had a playoff play playoff campaign for so long. Um, eventually it does wear down on the home attendance but away from home we're still taking we're still taking 1500 to, to quite far away games we took 4500 to Fulham we took 3500 to Doncaster like we're taking more fans away from home than, than at times we, we've got at home um, like Bury away last season we, we sold out two away ends both behind the goals so if if we can show a little bit of hope that, that we've got a playoff campaign or something um, and we start the season well, then the fans will come back and, and we'll have a good season. But if we've still got the same ownership, nothing, nothing will change and next season we'll have, a, we'll have a bad one. Right, Kieran, thank you very, very much for all your thoughts. Unfortunately, guys, that is it for, for this particular interview. Um, 
I don't know about you guys. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you have as well. Um, don't forget we are on Spotify, so feel free to give us a follow at WM32Football. Um, this will also be available and live on YouTube, so feel free to give it a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel as well. Kieran, been at, been an absolute pleasure to talk all things Oldham with you today. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Yeah, no, um, thank you very much for, like I say, for, for inviting somebody a little bit different onto the onto the show. <laughs> I'm sure you've, I'm sure a few people have, have learned a little bit about the lower leagues from, from this. Yeah, hundred percent. Even I have um, as well, to be fair. Um, and guys, if you would like to speak about your football club, um, feel free to get in touch on the social channels again at WM32Football. Um, and we hope to see you all again soon. Cheers. Thank you.